Hi, my name is Noah and I'm making this video to reach out for help for me, my wife, and some of my neighbors who are my friends. We are living in conditions that most people in Canada would consider unacceptable. Our building is in such disrepair that I don't think it's fair that we should have to live here anymore. My wife is sick because there's mold. One of my neighbors is sick because of the mold as well. My other neighbor, her place is in such disrepair. She's been asking for it to be fixed up. Her requests are ignored. And I'm gonna show you all of this in this video. A couple of years ago, there was a problem with the roof. And I think all of the units on the top floor, uh, the ceiling started falling down and water was pouring in. That went on for a long time. It went on for a couple of years. It got really bad last year. Since then, the landlord has put drywall up over the holes and patched up the roof, but there was mold inside the ceilings. The insulation is moldy. The wooden beams are moldy. And just putting drywall over it doesn't change that. There are holes still in the walls. The mold can still come in through those holes. They're not gonna be patched up. Last year, I discovered that the building was infested with bed bugs. I discovered this because I found some in my neighbor's unit, but then I found one in my bathtub. That's a weird place for a bed bug. I reported it to the landlord and superintendent and they had an exterminator come in and we had to, of course, put all of our stuff in bags and we had to throw out our furniture and the whole thing was really hard. Already, our stuff was in bags and all shoved into one room because the ceilings were leaking so much we couldn't use our rooms. And now we have to put everything else that's out in bags and living out of garbage bags is not fun. Um, so that was uh, months ago. So I found bed bugs in my bathroom and then after an extermination, I found them in her bathroom. I think that means that they're hiding in the walls and they're just going to keep coming back. My wife and I are tired of living out of garbage bags. And I think that's understandable. A couple of winters ago, one of my neighbors fell on the steps outside because there's no awning and there were no railings. They were removed, I think, to be replaced and just never replaced. Uh, she broke her wrist and her cheekbone and she is still suffering from problems from that and since then, flimsy railings have been installed, still no awning, but it's not a great solution. And it's unfair to her that it happened at all. There's evidence of water damage going all the way to the basement and I'm gonna show you. I don't think that's safe. There's evidence, I think, of structural damage from the top floor to the basement. I don't think that's safe. I don't think it's fair that we live like this. The reason I'm reaching out is because we can't afford to move. We're stuck in this place because of poverty. People keep saying I should move, but it's not so easy. Moving isn't free and finding a new place to live is difficult when you're poor. My wife is suffering from an allergy to interior mold. One of the symptoms is extreme chronic fatigue. She's so tired, she can hardly get out of bed most days. It's impossible for her to work. Where I work, I only have part-time hours. The hours are irregular, so I can't get another job. How are we supposed to support ourselves? We have to get out of here so that she can feel better, so she'll be able to go to work. But she can't work right now, to make money for us to get out of here. See the issue? My other neighbor, 
he's suffering from lung problems. One of his lungs is hardly working at all. He went from being an athlete to having to use an asthma pump. My other neighbor is always struggling financially and she's taking care of her friend who has lupus and she is a complete angel. And when you see the conditions that they live in, your heart is gonna break. Mine breaks every time I visit. Nobody should have to live like this. So I'm trying to raise money so that my wife and I and any of my neighbors who want to can have the opportunity to find somewhere better to live. Because I just can't stress enough that I don't think anybody should live like this. People keep telling me, just sue the landlord, go to court. But getting my landlord in trouble isn't my goal here. I just want our lives to be better. He's a person too, and he simply doesn't have the funds to do the repairs. So I kind of see his side. And, you know, I, I just want to mind my own business. So I'm not going to give my address. And I really don't want anyone who knows where I live to go after him in any way. That is not my goal here. My goal is not to harm anybody. So, with all that being said, brace yourself. I'm gonna show you everything I know about and have access to that's wrong with this building. I'll start with the way the ceilings were when the water was coming in before they were repaired. So, this is the old unit that we were living in. We moved out of there hoping for a better life, but that didn't happen. This is the new unit. I'm just showing them quickly. This video is already gonna to be too long. There's just cracks in the ceiling. This is some old water damage from previous leaks. It's another room, another room, and just the amount of water that was coming in. But this has been dealt with. There's no more water, at least. This is just ceiling that fell on the floor. So this is the uh, hole that was left that they just drywalled right over. Didn't clean it, nothing. This is some mold that was inside the ceiling. This is the ceiling fluff there, the insulation, moldy insulation. So this is our ceiling now, after the repair. There's suspiciously already a crack. Over here we have around our kitchen door. The ceiling is all cracked going down to the side of the door on the corner and up on the other side. Our previous unit was cracked in exactly the same way. Kind of weird. Oh, and our kitchen door sits all crooked. When I asked about fixing it, I was told that he wasn't gonna spend thousands on me that I was lucky it closed at all, the other ones in the building don't. So over here is in the kitchen, just big cracks in the ceiling going down the wall. I can't help but think that's not just in the paint. So this is the other side of that door. So it's cracked on both sides of the wall. See? Well, you can't really see it there, but yeah, on either side. It's cracked. Then on the other side of the kitchen. Uh, so this is our front door. Not really sure what happened here before we moved in, but it's very nice. This is my neighbor's kitchen floor. The one who takes care of her friend with lupus. This is their dining room ceiling. They're on the second floor, so I don't really know what this damage is from. It's their living room ceiling their entrance ceiling, their hallway ceiling in front of the bathroom where it gets humid and stained. This is in their bathroom where they have to shower. This is where my friends shower. Can you imagine washing yourself in here? Poor them, poor them. 
One is sick and the other one takes care. That's really sad. Okay, here's the outside of the building. I tried to show, but you can't really see. The bricks are curved outward. Usually bricks don't curve, so uh, yeah. Between uh, the bricks, the mortar's also missing. And over here, there's a hole that animals go in and out of. On the other side of this brick wall, there's also a crack and it's bent inward. So here's our patio door on our balcony. Uh, that's the screen. The landlord's well aware that that's what the screen is like. Oh, here is the garage. This pipe has been leaking for, I forget, months or years. I can't help but think that that water has to go somewhere when it um, when it goes back into the air, it, it's going to settle into the wood and stuff, I believe. That's not really good. Okay, so here's the basement evidence of water damage on the wall. How did that even happen? And this is the first floor. They opened this to do some plumbing and just never closed it. I think that's been weeks. I'm not really sure what's going on there. Now over here is the ceiling in the hallway on the first floor. Now cracks all up and down the walls. And the ceiling. And there's water damage in the ceiling on the first floor. That's the bottom floor. Now here, I believe this is a concrete wall between the first and second floors. Don't know how that got cracked. But I don't like it. And as you go up the stairs, you'll notice that the doors aren't closed. Those are fire doors. The mechanisms to keep them closed don't work, so if ever there's a fire, it can just spread. Now up here, the light's been burnt out for I don't know how long. And since the roof was repaired, they took the skylight out and just put a homemade box over it. So it's very dark here. Yeah, over here, uh, well, at the top of that ladder, this box. Here's our back door. I'm just showing it because I bet you, you have a nicer back door. So now that you've seen all that, again, I ask you, please help us. Anything will help. I'm going to set my goal high. I'm going to set my goal to $10,000. Yeah, that sounds crazy. But, you know, it's crazy for us to have to live like this. Moving doesn't cost $10,000, but... To pay for it in last month's rent up front, to pay for the move. You know, the people who live in this building, we don't have nice furniture. Needless to say, because we're poor. I'm tired of having furniture that I picked out of the garbage or that was given to me by friends who were just going to throw it out. We deserve nice things. We deserve the things that other Canadians have. Everyone should have the opportunity and the means to live comfortably and happily in their own home. Being pleased with your surroundings is so important. Coming home to a place you hate every day and waking up to a place you hate every day, it's not healthy and we don't deserve it. So please, even if you give us $5, everything helps. And at the end of it all, if we raise enough money, I will prove to you that I have shared it. I know I might not look to you like the sharing and kind type, but I always put others before myself and that I am generous. My wife gets upset with me because I give even when we don't have, and I go without so that other people don't have to. So it's not like I'm trying to make a sob story and try to get free money for myself certainly not never so please share this with as many people as you can put it on social media share it with people who don't know us it doesn't matter no one deserves to live in this building we deserve a way out i can't help but imagine that you agree so i thank you in advance for your kindness and your generosity. And I really, really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much.